Hey there, everyone. I've uh, moved over to the hands-on coding part of the uh, lecture now. Um, this is a follow-along part. There's nothing to turn in here, uh, but you can um, uh, really uh, do yourself a favor by uh, working through this with me. I have here my, uh, uh, my workstation, and I have already unzipped uh, lecture 2 demo into my MIS 3502 workspace so you should whatever folder you have on your uh, on your PC or MacBook um, where you're keeping all your work you should have the lecture 2 demo work uh, unzipped there so that's all I want to show you about that and I also have Visual Studio Code um, installed on my machine and I am going to, I've opened up my folder there that holds my workspace. So I can see Hello World from earlier in the semester. And now I'm looking at Lecture 2 Demo. And if I expand all that, I can see that there's uh, an index.html file in there. It's mostly empty. I have a couple graphic files, a picture of some fish. And I also have a file called slides.html. This is exactly where the, uh, the uh, screenshots came from the PowerPoint presentation I was just working through. So if you said, boy, I, I really wish I had that code. I wish I could play with it and do something uh, along those lines. This is it right here. It doesn't do much. Uh, it's just my uh, chance to uh, work with uh, the different kinds of function declaration and to write a loop and so on. So not much to see there. All right, let's go look at uh, index.html. And what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be just writing some um, some play fun uh, code that um, uh, gives us an excuse to do uh, some of those language elements that I was just talking about, function declarations, event handlers, um, uh, loop, a, a couple loops, um, and uh, what else, a conditional statement. Okay. So not much going on here. Uh, I should point out that uh, the start file has in it this head tag. The head tag contains links to uh, the CDNs for uh, for jQuery and for Bootstrap, and without those, um, you would not. If I don't have the links uh, and script references to Bootstrap, I can't use Bootstrap. If I don't have the references to jQuery, I can't use jQuery because those things they are well. jQuery is a uh, library, and Bootstrap is a framework. Those things don't exist unless I I bring them in here through these references. Okay, um, I promised I would do a little bit of uh, a little bit of bootstrap. So I'm going to do that work down here in the body. Notice that my HTML document has three parts. This is should be familiar territory. It has the head, which gives me overhead about all the things this page needs. I have the body, which is where all the visible material is, is uh, presented. And I have the script tag. This is where all my JavaScript would go. Those three things together, they make up the core of the, you know, everything I could find in an HTML file. All right. So uh, if I'm going to do some, use a bootstrap layout, I want to create a, a div tag here. And I want to give the div tag a class of container. And don't worry, I'm not going to do a whole lot of bootstrap here in this uh, hands-on session, but I think it's good to see this. Um, and if you were to follow that link that I had in the slide deck, you'd have an example there of, of you know, this is how I get started with bootstrap. This is exactly what I have. And then inside of that container, I can have a uh, another div of class. row so this is just like the row of a of a table or a spreadsheet and uh, i need a column inside of that and 
And in there, at last, I can have some content. So if I were to preview this in my browser, there's my text. Hello world. And I know that's not very exciting, um, but it, it is it is uh, it, it is good to see that come up and nothing too unexpected happening here. Um, so if I I'm going to kick that up a notch, I'm going to turn that into a, uh, an H1 tag, make it a little bit more predominant. Okay, and Bootstrap has this notion of spans, which I know was briefly discussed in 2402, but let me say it again: a the 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 web a web page on a screen is divided up into 12 vertical slices. So, um, and because I've used a Bootstrap of type container, I have a little bit of border around the outside as well. So right now I have a 12 span column. That means, all right, I'm going to use up all 12 spans. And that's not very, it's, you know, that's just basically one big page with a, with a border around it. Um, to see uh, the, the spans in action here, I'm going to, uh, again, I'm going to copy paste just to kind of move this along a little bit. So copy and paste and I'm going to have a, a two span column on the left. I'm going to put the word left in there and then I'm going to have a two span column on the right. I'll put the word right in there and uh, the spans have to add up it uh, spans inside of a row so I'm all I only have one row the spans inside of a row need to add up to 12 so I need to change this number now to 8 so there you go 2 plus 8 plus 2 equals 12 and when I save that and I preview this in my browser I have left hello world and right now, because this text is uh, left justified, um, it, it looks a, a little bit off. So let me let me fix that up just a little bit. I'm going to add a another class to this tag. And I'm shutting off my uh, shutting off my email. I don't need those notifications. Um, so I'm going to add a second class of text center. And uh, let's see if that does it. There we go. So there we are. So there's hello world in the middle. I have the left column, the right column. And what I want you to observe here is one of the reasons we use Bootstrap is because of the following behavior. This is fine when the screen is uh, is is big. It's on a desktop or laptop. But as this page gets smaller, 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 and maybe it's now being viewed on a tablet or on a smartphone, Bootstrap is using Bootstrap rows and columns. It are makes the whole arrangement smart enough that I can uh, have these automatically stack on top each, of each other in, in, a, in, a, in a logical, predictable way. So that is called a responsive design. And it's one of the big justifications for using a CSS framework. All right, I'm going to take the words left and right out of there. And I'm just going to replace it with a space. And another space. I've spent more than enough time on Bootstrap right here. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to replace it with the text. Let's 
go fishing. Okay. So I'm going to create a uh, a collection of of um, of buttons. I'm going to create several buttons, and I'm going to use those buttons to manipulate the contents of a of a message. So here's my div div with the ID equal to message. Okay, and I'm also going to create some buttons input type equals button. Uh, sad to say, there's more than one way to or to express the notion of a button in HTML, but what I'm doing here is what you will see me do for the rest of the semester. Uh, in my mind, this is the way to do it. Right? So ID. I'm going to create an ID so I know which button it is I'm I'm talking about in any given situation, and I will give this uh, an ID of the button. How about that? And I will give it a value. And the value will be click and close the tag. All right. So there's my self-closing tag, my input tag. And while I'm here, I'm going to create a few more. Um, I'm going to do this with a control C. Oops. And a control V and another control V. So I did some copying and pasting, and I'm going to have the button hide. And this will hide the message. And this will be the button show. And this will show. The message. So uh, ultimately, what I'm going to end up with is um, uh, I'm going to end up with some buttons that I can click, and I'm going to be manipulating the content of this div tag and whether it's visible or not. All right? I'm going to put a couple line breaks above and below this just to uh, offset it from the rest of the text, so that this, this does not just butt right up against everything else. That'll be more important later. Uh, but right now, I want to see what it looks like. So here we go. I'm going to open this in the default browser. There it is. Let's go fishing. And you can see that it's not doing anything yet. So there we go. Uh, I'm not so keen on it being centered anymore. So I'm going to take this text center class out of there and refresh. And now I'm over here. Not very exciting, just a page, doesn't do anything. So let's add some logic down here to uh, make actions happen on the page. So when I have a block of, of script, of code, um, I, the, I often break it up into pieces. The, the top here, the top section here, it, it would be used for things like declarations. and global variables. And in this case, I only have the, the use strict declaration. Big global things that are going to affect the whole script. Then I have another block. I dedicate that to what I call supporting functions, also sometimes called controllers. They are going to manipulate the, you know, whatever I have up here in the screen, in the uh, in the body, I should say, the body, the viewable part of the page. And then the last section I have here are what we call event handlers. Now, of course, these are just comments I'm putting in. And as of today, we've only we've only talked about one kind of event, the click event. So I will define that. So let's do this. Let's define the click event for uh, this button right here. Now, it's going to be so stinking simple that I really don't need a supporting function to, to, do, to do this. 
So this is one of those rare cases where the click event handler is so simple that I don't need a supporting function. Often the click event handler serves to call a, 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 a supporting function that executes multiple steps. But this is going to be basically, these are going to be one step wonders here. So let's see if I can do this. Um, so my click event handler looks like I'm going to put some blank lines in here just to get this up to the middle of the page where everybody can see it. So go find me the button. Yeah. And when it is clicked, do something. What? Well, it's going to be a function, right? So I'm going to do this using arrow notation. I'm going to indicate that this is going to be a function now, right? So it's pair of parentheses an arrow, a pair of curly brackets. There's my function. And uh, so everything inside of here has to be a function. Um, and I'm going to say, well, this is this is what it is. And uh, I could I could have written it like this. Um, that would have been fine. But I'm going to go like this. That's the uh, oops. That's kind of the modern way. So save that. And what will I do? Well, I'm going to go find the message div, and I'm going to put some text in there. So my text will be, uh, go find for me the tag with the ID of message, and put in its inner HTML some text. A bad day fishing is better than a good day at save. Okay. And now I'm going to see if it works. So I'm going to open this up. And uh, because I'm, you know, I'm going to close my other tabs here. So I just have the one tab open. And uh, because this is all kind of new to me, uh, I'm going to immediately open up the developer tools because I'm, I'm almost expecting an error. I'm expecting that I made a mistake. Uh, you should do that too. No, it's, it's no, no, uh, nothing wrong with getting it wrong on the first try. It, it's 50-50 shot, right? Uh, so maybe you got it right, maybe you got it wrong, and but you can... Um, have that open ready to correct whatever you have so this doesn't do anything this doesn't do anything click me does do something ah right what did it let's do it again let's watch what happens this didn't do anything this didn't do anything this did something what did it do well if i were to inspect this code here it found the div tag with the id of message and put this into the inner html of the tag previously that tag looked like that right that's what it looked like and then i clicked on this and it put the tag it put the text in there that's what the html method does all right well what if i wanted to hide that or show that now notice that hiding is different from erasing right i'm not taking the content away i'm making it invisible hiding is different from overwriting right I'm not taking this away. I'm hiding it. Let's so let's write the the click event handlers for for the uh, hide and show button. Ready? Let's go. Dollar sign. The did I call it button hide has a click event. What goes in there? A function goes in there. How do I write a function? Pair of parentheses, arrow, curly brackets. Okay. What should it do? Go find for me. Oops. The message. The tag with the ID of message. There it is. And hide it. Okay. I think I, I think I'm pretty good with that. Let me do the show 
feature as well. And I'll test them both all in one go. Uh, so go find for me the button. And then do something when it is clicked. What should it do? It should do whatever function I define here. How do I define a function? With a pair of parentheses, an arrow, and a pair of curly brackets. Okay. All right. What what's what are we gonna do? Well, I'm gonna go find the message. Uh, message. And I'm going to show it. Now I'm going to do, uh, let's test that out. Test that out. Open it in the browser. Uh, click me. Hide it. Show it. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. It didn't work. It didn't work. Let's, let's check our developer tools. Did I make a mistake? There's no errors showing up. Let's try again. Hide it. Hmm. Seems like once it's hidden, it's permanently hidden. So maybe I made a mistake. Uh, oh, no. Hmm. Oh, anybody see it? Anybody see it? See it now? Typo. Okay. So there is nothing to make the button visible again. So I'm going to back that off a little bit. And now that I fixed it up, I'm going to refresh the page. Click me, hide it, show it, hide it, show it. I'm in business now. Like I said, there's no, there's, there, there's nothing wrong with, with making a mistake or two. You code a little, test a little, code a little, test a little. And when you find something that's behaving in a way that you don't expect, fix it right away, right? So that you can move on to the next bit. All right, so we did good there. Um, how about um, how about adding a class to this? So I'm going to go find the message, and I'm going to change the way it looks. I'm going to change its appearance. I'm going to add the class of uh is it going to make it look like an alert and it's going to be alert that is a success now in my next video lecture i'll talk a little bit more about these classes but for right now just know that i'm adding some styling to the button there let's refresh it there we go so bootstrap gave, gives me the ability to make things look nice i can hide that show that good all right Let's do some, um, hide it, show it, hide it, show it. Looking pretty good here. Let's add to this. All right, so now, now I'm gonna add in some, some new buttons and those buttons are going to add content to another div that I have down here below. So this is going to be my div where I'm going to add content and I will give this tag an ID ID, ID of fish. I'm going to add some fish yeah, to the tag. And by fish, I mean an image. Uh, an image looks like this image with a source attribute equal to, and I will put in one fish dot PNG. And notice that Visual Studio Code picked up on the fact that I had such a file there. It auto completed it for me. And I'm going to specify its width. And I have a note here that says 150 pixels looks pretty good. Okay. So 
So uh, before I do anything else, let's test that out. Open it in the browser. There's my one fish. Great. Let's put some buttons in. It's an input tag with type equal to button and an ID equal to add one fish button with a value that says add one. Um, I'm going to create some other buttons here because I'm going to want them later on. So I'm copying, I'm pasting two, three, four, five. I think that's how many I want. Uh, I'm going to add one fish, add two fish. Blue fish. I'll do red fish. Keeping true to the source material. The book says one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And blue. And then erase the fish. And uh, just to mix it up a little bit, I'm going to say I'm going to add five red fish. I'm going to add five blue fish. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. All right. So if I preview that, still doesn't do anything, but I see that my buttons are there. Okay, let's, let's do a little bit more then. Let's see what we can do. I want to create click event handlers for, for those buttons. A button is something you click on. I write the click event handler to specify what happens when I click on the button. So add one fish. Great. The ID, add one fish. When that happens, I want to click to find, I want to find what, what's happening, the click event. And when that happens, I will execute a function. What function? This function. Well, what should it be? Now, this is going to be, um, uh, this could be more than one step. Yeah, it looks pretty easy. I guess I can do it down here without creating a supporting function. So let's let's do it. I'm going to say um, go find for me the tag with the ID of fish and append some text. So uh, just for for, for kicks, I'm going to append the text hi there, just so you can see the behavior of all this. So that's not that's not doing what I wanted at all. That's, that's not right. Oh, add one fish button. Okay, but I don't want to put in hi there, hi there, hi there. I want it to add a fish. Well, how do I represent the fish? Well, I represent the fish with this HTML. So I'm going to add to the inner HTML of the tag. And instead of adding hi there, hi there, hi there, I'm going to add this over and over and over again. So uh, let me type that in.
could just do this. Pair of quotes, paste. Notice that I'm putting the image tag in here. And I was savvy enough to understand that I'm going to have these double quotes on the inside. So I'll use single quotes on the outside. Save. Now what does it do? So I can keep adding one fish until I'm all done. And it would be nice if I could erase all the fish. Right? Ah, I see, right. right. Pretty good. I'm going to add two fish. That was a copy and a paste. Two fish button append. Two fish because I have an image already named two fish. All right. Refresh. One fish, two fish. Two fish, two fish. One fish, two fish. One fish, two fish. Notice how it all, but I still have these to work on. Okay, good. And when I reload the page, it all resets. How about this? What if I were to do this? At the bottom of all this, I'm going to put in another uh, couple break tags. And I'm going to put in an anchor tag with an href that points to index.html. So this anchor tag points to itself. And it's going to serve as sort of a refresh or start over button. You don't believe me? So I can hit this. And it's going to, no matter what I've added in here, it's going to re reload this page. Put it back to its starting spot. Okay. Pretty good. All right. Functions. Let's define some functions. Uh, so I want a function that's going to add uh, some number of fish. Uh, uh, some number of red fish, some number of blue fish. And I'm going to want a function for erase all fish. Yeah, I'm just looking at my notes here. So let's do the add red fish button or function. Uh, uh, I'll do the button first. So add one fish button, two fish button, fish, two fish, red fish. Now here, let's pretend that that's somewhat complicated. Here I'm going to call a supporting function because honestly it's rare that you can do everything you want to do with one line of jQuery so uh, sometimes you need to have functions that have some complexity so I'm going to have a function I'm going to call it add red fish right now if add red fish uh, um, was just always going to do exactly the same thing. It doesn't need to take parameters. But I'm going to say add redfish 5. That is to say, uh, I'm going to use the number 5 as a parameter. It's going to be something that I pass into this function. Okay, so let's do a function expression. So let add redfish equal a function. How do I write a function? With a pair of parentheses, an arrow, and some curly brackets. Now here in the parentheses I'm going to put in x because the value 5 
is going to be fed into this variable x. Okay, and then in my function, I'm going to have a loop because I'm going to do the same thing over and over again. So it's going to be for let i equal zero, and while i is less than x, and then i plus plus, and then a pair of curly brackets, and then the thing I'm going to do over and over and over again, which is going to be an append operation. Um, so I'm tired of typing append operations, so I'm going to go borrow this one from down here, a copy and a paste, and I'm going to be appending the red fish. And it's going to do that one, two, three, four, five times. Well, actually, I should say zero, one, two, three, four times, right? For a grand total of five. Let's see if it works. So I'm going to hit save. I'm going to refresh the page. There we go. If you're not convinced as to what's happening here, go to the developer tools. Open up sources, open up your page, and I'm going to put uh, a breakpoint right there. And I'm going to hit uh, add five red fish. Now, that went down to the click event handler. The click event handler called the supporting function, and you can see that the value five was passed into x. So now I'm going to run through this loop five times. And hit run again. I'll just run through it all. And I get I get my five fish. Okay, I'm gonna do that for the blue fish. Write my event handler. Now understand that if I wanted to change this number, I wanted to I wanted my code to generate put in 10 blue fish. All I gotta do is change the argument here, right? I'm gonna leave it as five, but that's all I would have to do. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. And now I'm going to erase all the fish. All right. So to erase all the fish, all the fish, uh, I will want to go find this div tag with the ID of fish, and I will want to empty it. Okay. So erasing all the fish. Let's do it. Here we go. Erase fish button. That's what I called it, right? Erase fish button. Okay. And uh, I'm going to say, and it's not necessary for me to have this comment in here. Tighten this up a little bit. So, erase fish. put my new supporting function into place. Let's talk through that one more time. I want there to be a function. It will be named erase fish. Erase fish is a function. How do I write to find a function? With a pair of parentheses, an arrow, and a pair of curly brackets. All right. This function doesn't take any parameters. Not doesn't take any, it just, it just is, right? It doesn't take any arguments. And what I want to do here is I want to go find the tag with the ID of fish. And I want to manipulate this inner HTML. Now, how am I going to do that? I, I want to put nothing into the inner HTML of fish. 
thereby replacing all the fish that are inside the tag. How do I do that? I do that by specifying an empty string. Put the empty string into the inner HTML of the fish div tag. Let's see if it works. Open. And there's no there's no rhyme or reason to the order here, just unless you're just a real big Dr. Seuss fan and you have to do it in that order. Erase all the fish. See how they're gone? Let's let's watch let's watch it in let's watch this in the um in the code previewer, right? Here's my div. Two fish. Red fish. Blue fish. Erase all the fish. Watch it. Watch what happens here and here. Right? Because I repl I took them all out with the HTML method. Okay, start over. Let's start all, all over again. Uh, I haven't written any conditional statements yet. So just for fun, um, I'm going to I'm going to create a a, a message here. Another message, I'll call it, um, where's my, oh, there it is. There's, I'm going to, I've got my, my fish div. And I will call this new div below. I will call it, I'll give it an ID of fish message. All right. This is a message that goes with the fish div right so i have this div here and uh, what i want to do is if the user presses that erase button multiple times i just want to note in there that says uh, there are no fish to erase right once they're gone they're gone how can i do that well um i'm so i'm going to i'm going to protect i'm going to i'm going to have a conditional statement around this operation so it goes like this. First, I'm going to create a variable. I will call it uh, content. How about that for a variable name? And it will be all the content that is inside the div tag with the ID of fish. And I get that with this. Notice that this line is different from this line. This is retrieving the content from the div. I needed two slashes there. Retrieving the content from the, so there it is. And I'm gonna put it in a variable called content. And if, content is the same as the empty string, then I will show my error message. Else, I will do this. Now, there, that's pretty good. So if I see, if the content's already erased, I'm not going to try to erase it again. Instead, I will go find the message, uh, hashtag, what did I, I think I called it fish message, fish message. Let's go look. Yep, that's what I called it, fish message. And I will put some HTML in there and say, uh, there are no more fish to erase. Okay. And how about, how about I put some sort of alert around that? Make it obvious to the user. So, hashtag fish message add 
class alert alert dash danger that should be pretty good so this says go go get whatever's in fish the fish div if it's empty show me this if it's not empty take the action that's my if statement let's give it a try refresh the page add some fish erase all the fish erase again it says there are no more fish to erase it looks like i'm almost there except that i expected that to be pink what did i do wrong oh alert alert ah can't type there it is so i didn't get the coloring all right i got the the alert styling but i did not get the appropriate color let's try it one more time there are no more fish to erase right now here's a funny thing you see how you see how that message persists what would i have to do to keep that to keep that from continuing on it's almost as if it's almost as if every if I click any one of these, I want to I want to wipe this message out. That would do it, right? So I don't need to do this again. If I click one of this one or this one or this one or this one, I want to wipe I want to wipe that message out because it's no longer relevant. I I'm 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 adding the fish, so this doesn't make sense anymore. That is easily done with a with two lines of code. So when I click the um, red fish button, the blue fish button, the one fish, the two fish, so all my fish buttons, um, I want to go empty out the fish message. That's putting the empty value into fish message and and removing any classes that are on that tag because if i don't do that i'll end up with a pink line across the screen right so this is the same operation when i do the one fish button or the two fish button or the red fish button or the blue fish button um, I don't really have to do it for erase fish because that's just going to handle it all by itself okay try that so one fish two fish red fish blue fish erase all the fish I got an error message now I go do it again so my message is gone now because it did two it did two things it cleared out the message and then it added the fish right erase erase start over that's pretty good all right so this kind of went a little bit longer than i wanted it to but um that sort of uh, uh two-step thinking is really important and i was able to work in just about all of the jquery methods that i had on the slide deck and uh, if you have been able to follow along and you get all this you have all this working um and you follow the logic of it you are in excellent shape um and i think that's going to be about it for right now i look forward to seeing you in class and i will talk to you soon